Let's thank God and bless Him for bringing oh, us back. Daddy, we bless you, Lord God. We thank you for your goodness. We give you praise. We give you glory. Thank you for bringing for us, bringing us again back again again to school. Thank you for your Blessed sustaining be your grace. Name. Thank you, Lord, thank for, you for all that you are to us. Thank you for all you have been. Thank you for, thank you for all you are in yourself. You been for us. We Let's so it much be your name, you, mighty warrior. Thank you, King of Glory. We, we worship you. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Father, thank you. We're back here. Thank you, Lord to World War College, mm. to come and learn of you again. Yes, Lord. What we need to do to come out and enjoy the full liberty, mm. the full emancipation, emancipation that Jesus Christ purchased for us on the cross. The full salvation. Mm. Teach us, Lord, mm. for you are the great teacher. Mm. Your name, you, they used to call you Rabbi. Mm. Holy Spirit, take over the, the teaching. Guide us into all truth, as Jesus promised that you would. Father, oversee everything. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. We ask for the covering of the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. All over us, all over this place, all over our loved ones. Yes. Wherever they are, all over the world. We ask for a covering of the pillar mm. and fire to surround us, to surround all our loved ones, Amen. separate us from the enemy and be darkness to them. Amen. So that they will they their counter arrows will backfire on them. Amen. To hit the pillar of fire and go back to send them. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank Thank you, Lord. We give you praise and glory. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Today we're going further into, after the 10 steps prayer, it has had so many views on YouTube. Everybody was just running there and, you know, it had like 60 views in, in six days and it's still counting. We bless God. Hallelujah. Now, but what we want to say is this, we want to, the next chapter is where we are. It's called mop up operation in warfare. Mop up. Now we've had the main battle, and that is the ten steps prayers. That's the main battle. And when you have a battle, you have all sorts of fallout. You know the place is in a mess, and all sorts of things. You don't even know some enemies will be still be hiding somewhere. You know the Lord gave us all those, uh, all those warnings. He said you have to be very careful. You have to carefully prepare, you know, uh, um, your, you have to carefully clear your land of promises. As we said, this is our land of promises that our second Adam is taking us. We want to carefully clear it of all that we can see and what we cannot see. Because God said the enemies that are remaining are, and are hiding... I will send hornets to locate them and destroy them for you. Which means they can still be hiding somewhere. It's, and he said we must not let them be because they will be hiding and they will be growing and increasing. And one day there will be whips on our backs and thorns in our eyes. God forbid. Amen. 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 The devil is like a stray goat or a stray dog, you know. You should keep on coming to check to see whether you are serious or not. When he sees that you are serious with God and that you have been filling your environment with praises, with the word of God, memorization of the word, that's what God means. He said to possess the land. You possess it with the presence of God. Possess it with prayers. Possess it. You remember that your land is not a place. It's an environment you carry around with you where everything answers to you. Everything works for you. You must possess it. You must strengthen it by continuing in prayer. It's not the end. This is just the beginning. Because life itself is lifelong war. Job said it. 
He said, man is born of a few days and yet is all full of battle. Yes. The important thing is that we Christians have the uh, all the facilities made available for us to overcome every battle. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, um, so we want to look at what next to do now that we have um, we have bulldozed. Uh, you know, we we gave the we gave the analogy of let's say your grandfather um, left a land for you and you did not know, and by the time you got there, even with your sea of wool, there were different uh, people. One is frying a car in one corner, another one the carpenter shed is there, then another one uh, mechanic workshop is there, and another one is doing vulcanizer in another ah. And then you come and you're waving your sea of It makes no difference to them. Until the day you come with police and bulldozer. Your police is the angel. Your bulldozer is the word of God. Like the ten steps we did. Then you bulldoze all of them out of the way. Bulldoze their structures. Their altars. Their pictures. That's what the Bible means by their altars. Their pictures. Their power base. The place where they're hiding. Bulldoze it. Then you have to clear the land and make sure nothing is hiding under the rubble. And then you begin to build and to plant. Amen. Amen. Remember what they did to Jesus Christ. They pursued him and pursued him until they hung him on the cross. Not knowing that that is what he exactly came to do. And the Bible says that when they have fulfilled all that was written of him, they hung him or they took him down from the tree and laid him in a sepulchre. Acts 13, 29. Now all these things, all these things um, need to be done for us to be able to, for us to be able to, to do the reason for which Christ died for us and the reason for which God um, created us. Let's open Luke 1. There's a scripture there that I found one day and I was very excited. This was like three years ago when we were having the 70 days fasting. And I began to use it throughout the 70 days to pray. Luke 1, I think from 71. It was a, it was a prophecy that was given by the father of John the Baptist. What did he say? That we should be saved from our enemies. Okay, no. Um, yes, that's the... Now, this is the reason why Christ came. Yes, go on. That we should be saved from our enemies. Yes. And from the hand of all that hate us. Yes. To perform the mercy promised to our fathers. Mm -hmm. And to remember his holy covenant. Yes. The oath which he swung to our father Abraham, yes. that he would grant unto us mm -hmm. that we being delivered out of the hand of our enemy mm -hmm. might serve him without fear. Yes. In holiness mm -hmm. and righteousness yes. before him. Before him. All the days of our lives. All the days of our lives. Actually, there are just two verses I wanted there. 71. The reason why Christ came is that we might be delivered from the hands of our enemies and from the hands of all those that hate us. We are not talking about physical enemies now. We're talking about the devil. The devil is the enemy and his strong men. All the human beings they're using, they're just, they're just pawns in his hands. Once we can get rid of the power behind them, we will, we will get rid of, of every captivity. And the reason why we need to, to, to get rid of all that is so that we might serve him. We must serve God in holiness and in righteousness and without fear all the days of our lives. If not, we're just going to, we are just going to uh, uh, be fumbling. And these are the things that will make somebody fall even at the height of ministry. This is what is called deliverance, which some people say does not exist. You don't need to do deliverance. All you need to do is be born again. Mm. 
okay now let's let's look at um let's look at what next what next what next after we have um after we have got rid of after we have done the um 10 steps prayers you must be ready for more war amen amen because now you have you have sent them packing those people that have carpenter shed there and the carpenter the uh, lacquer and this one and all that somebody brought them there say look i found some land sometimes it's somebody that brought them there and say look there's some land lying fallow it's my cousin's land go and be using it just give me something small they will now go back and tell them that they have they have sent he has come he has sent us back you know the strong men will go back to devil the devil and say she has set us packing from her land of promises. The devil will say, why? Who opened her eyes? What happened? No, 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 no. There must be something else we will do. Now, they will now start trying to see how we are. they're going to uh, get back into the land, whether by uh, seduction or by downright war. So, they will go and gang up. They'll go and find some more thugs from next the next gang, next door. They'll go and look for more uh, um, strong men. Jesus Christ said they will look for seven more wicked spirits. If they come and they see that you did not quickly erect, erect a, a, a fence round your land and put a gate and lock it, they'll go and look for more people to come and occupy it. And if your fence is too weak, they'll pull it down and... And go and occupy it. And by the time you come back, there are too many. So don't put off your armor yet. This is what we are trying to say. Remember in Egypt, as recorded in Egypt, Exodus 14. Exodus 14. When the king of, when Pharaoh was, when his, the, when God has judged all his gods. Exodus 14, 5 to 7. When God has ju judged all his gods on land, in the waters, in the, uh, in the skies, in vegetation, and their highest God is their first son. He now said Moses can go. He said, now go, 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 just go. Okay, now what then happened? Exodus 14, 5 to 8. And it was told the king of Egypt mm -hmm. that the people fled. Mm -hmm. And the heart of Pharaoh and his servants was turned against the people. Mm -hmm. And they said, Why have we done this? Mm -hmm. That we have let Israel go from serving us. Uh -huh. And he made ready his chariot uh -huh. and took his people with him. Mm -hmm. And he took 600 chosen chariots and all the chariots of, of Egypt. Egypt. Imagine. And captains over every one of them. Mm -hmm. And the Lord hadn't the heart of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, mm -hmm. and he pursued after the children of Israel. Mm -hmm. And the children of Israel went out with an high and hand. High hand. They went out with boldness because they saw how God fought for them. But they did not know that there's a revenge attack coming. So this is why we're having this teaching today. In case of a Pharaoh with hardened heart, that is regretting that you know <laughs> you have you have chased out the, the strong men from your land and he has let you go he can go he will go now, now imagine all that he did these israelites are on foot they did not have any chariots they had no horses maybe at the worst they had some mules and yet he had brought he brought all the chosen chariots of egypt captains 600 chosen and, and all the chariots of Egypt and captains over every one of them to fight people that are not even armed so this is why we are having this um this teaching today it's called mop up operation amen amen now um i'm not just raising a false alarm we have read it we have read it now what what happened to the children of Israel? 
And remember Job 14, 1, that I'm always quoting, man is born of a woman but of few days and is full of trouble. The battles of life, the battles of life, we shall keep fighting till we die. Don't let anybody deceive you that a Christian life is an easy one. It is only easy for you to live the Christian life when you have learned how to war. When you have had learned how to war and you have some arsenals, some arrows in your heart that you have memorized. So that if anything, if you see anything in the dream, you get up and you immediately fire them back. That is how it works. The battles will become easier to bear. They become easier because we continue winning battle after battle. And as we stand firm and refuse to release any part of our lives or our land to Satan. You must commit all, you, all that you have to God fully. Lord, I dedicate everything I have to you. I dedicate my life, my children, my husband, my, my wife. I dedicate our house. Any th new thing you buy, Lord, we dedicate it to you. Even a pair of slippers, I dedicate it to you. I belong to you. You must be resolute and keep on declaring loudly, regularly, no, Satan, I will never belong to you again. I belong to God. All I have belongs to God. He died for me. He gave himself for me. I belong to him in the first place. So be gone in Jesus' name. The Lord rebuke you. Get thee behind me. You must make such declarations a, a way of life as you go on in life. You know, you must have a warrior mentality. Your enemy is Satan. Let me keep saying it. The human beings is using, you have to forgive them. That does not mean that they must now become your best friend. You have to use wisdom with that. Amen. Amen. But you must know that Jesus Christ did not give up his life until it was time for him to die. Don't have a martyrdom mentality. Don't have a martyrdom. You want to be a martyr. You want to die for Christ. Did he send you? Did he send you? In these days, he's looking for laborers. I know there will be martyrs, but be sure that right now, Jesus Christ said at the end times, what God is looking for is laborers. That's why we read that scripture in Luke 1. That we may be delivered from our enemies. That we might serve him in holiness and righteousness with all the days of our lives without fear. All the days of our lives. You must fulfill your day. You must fulfill your day. The Bible says, we fulfill our days. God said, I will fulfill your days up to the last second. Up to the last second, you're still serving God till you die. You must never give up. You must never contemplate suicide. No matter how hard the battle is, you must never contemplate giving up. You must never contemplate suicide. Suicide, you are going straight to hell. Let's say it now. The Bible says, thou shalt not kill. He didn't say, oh, accept yourself. You can kill yourself. No, you can't. You do not belong to yourself. So what you must have is a warrior mentality to stand up always against the devil and say, no, I will not give up. Amen. 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 And remember always that there is there are angelic assistance that God gave us. Exodus 23, please. Exodus 23. There are angelic, he gave us angelic assistance to take us into the land and to and to be with us there from 20 to 22. Exodus 23, 20 to 22. Behold. Mm -hmm. I sent an angel before thee mm -hmm. to keep thee in the way mm -hmm. and to bring thee into the place which I have prepared. Mm -hmm. Beware of him mm -hmm. 
and obey his voice. Yes. Provoke him not, mm -hmm. for he will not pardon your transgressions, mm -hmm. for my name is in him. Now, one of the ways you provoke your 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 angel, and he will not he will not cooperate with you anymore, is by speaking negatively. Oh, I thought this battle was over, but we have done 10 steps. I thought the battle is over. What is all this now? Oh my God, can we ever win this battle? Oh, you have provoked your enemy. Because you have told him that God's power is not strong enough. Remember that we said, the Bible says in two places, in, in Isaiah and the book of Isaiah and the book of Hosea, that my people are perish for lack of knowledge. My people have gone into captivity for lack of knowledge. That is why we're giving you this knowledge. That after 10 steps prayers, you still have to do mop-up operation. If they have now shown up, maybe since you've listened, yes, okay, they've told us we will mop you up in a minute. 22. But if thou shalt indeed obey his voice mm -hmm. and do all that I speak, yes. then I will be an enemy unto their enemies mm -hmm. and an adversary unto their adversaries. Unto thine adversaries. So God himself will come to a point, of course, he'll be fighting for you. Hallelujah. God will be fighting mm -hmm. for you. Be fighting for you. Be fighting for you. Heaven is our home. Is the resting place. Is the place where we're going to rest. The kind of rest we enter in this world is that I know that I will win every battle. Because I belong to the army of the son of David. Even David, his father, never lost any battle. Therefore, I can never lose any battle. I can never lose any battle. Because I use his name. Because I belong to the army of Jehovah Nissi. The man of war. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We are here on earth to live, to learn how to live in holiness and righteousness. So that we can learn how to, we can qualify to abide with our heavenly father in heaven. There is no prince that is not trained how to become a king. No, no prince in this world. They are all trained how to behave like royalty and how to, because any of them can be a king at some point. Queen Elizabeth that just passed last year, it was not her turn to be king. At all. It was not even her father's turn to be king. She would never have been queen. It was her father's older brother that was to be king. Then he abdicated. And so her father now became king. And her father died young. So every royalty is trained how to behave in a palace. Because they, they, in our own case, we are all going to be kings. Not because the king uh, is going to die. Our own king is an everlasting king. He is the king of kings. We are the kings. He made us priests and kings. So for us to qualify to live with our heavenly father in heaven, we are here training, being trained, being trained so that we will live holy and live godly and make heaven. Be sure that the battle for which you are battling, that we are battling, is battle against sin. All the devil is looking for is to make us fall. He's not just looking for uh, okay, I will make sure they don't have children. It's, that's not all he's looking for. He's looking for, I will make sure they don't have children so that one day they will get tired and be lured to the devil to go and look for children from one baba somewhere, in one corner somewhere. And therefore, that person will fall and God will be hurt. Then you now have a child. Now, listen. They themselves, the same devil that is sitting in the womb or holding on to the fallopian tubes 
or holding on to the man's seed is the same one that you now go and consult. So all he will do is tell the demon that is sitting in the womb, okay, you can come out, but you can go and sit in her liver. So you can give her cancer of the liver. <laughs> or you can possess the child. And then instead of bringing forth a godly seed, you will now bring out a child of Belial that is actually going to be a, 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 a pain, a pain to both parents. God forbid. So we must, our desire to make, to live holy and make heaven is, is the main reason for satanic strivings and attacks. And the apostle Paul warned us, Hebrew 12, he warned us in Hebrew 12. <clears throat> Let me read it. Hebrew 12, 1 to 4. He said, wherefore, since we are also compassed about with so great a a, um, a cloud of witnesses. Now, where is this cloud of witnesses? He has listed them out in Hebrews 11. That is the cloud of witnesses are the cloud of those who through faith, faith in God, went through all these battles of life and did not fall. They made it. So seeing that we have such a great cloud of witnesses looking at us, urging us on. He said, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame. And he sat down at the right hand of the throne of God, Three, for consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself. He was, he was being contradicted by sinners all through his life, striving with him. Yet, he said, consider him lest ye be wearied and faint in your minds. If Jesus Christ went through it, we will go through it. Verse four, ye have not yet resisted unto blood, striving against sin. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, so what are the other things that may still show up? There are many things. There are many challenges of life that you need the word of God. You need to know which word of God to use to fight them. So dealing with common challenges of life with the word of God, that is the mop-up operation. How do you mop up? The first one is dealing with liars, slanderers, backbiters, conspirators, and so on. People use their mouth to chew you, chew your reputation, talk behind you, slander you, see how they will talk to people that should, people that should do you good. They will go behind you, go and tell them not to do it, and so on. Now, this, this, is, this seems to be very petty, but it is a very common problem. It's a very common tool that the devil uses against Christians. Being lied against, being the target of backbiting, slander, conspiracy. It can have, a, but it can have very devastating and far reaching effects in the life of the victim. If you are always losing your job, for instance, because there's always a conspiracy against you, you are always losing your job. You are always somebody promised you, you know, he's going to do this for you, and before you know it, somebody has been used. Ah, that person, don't help him. Look, I helped him last year. He didn't. It, what has he done with what I helped him last year? Don't help him. So the person that promised you that he will help you with that business, somebody has gone to him and said, don't help him. You can imagine if by the time somebody has gone through so many that so many times <laughs> the discouragement will be terrible by the time you've lost so many jobs the discouragement will be terrible poverty 
leads to poverty. The person behind that is the devil himself, the serpent. John 8, 44. John 8, 44 is the devil himself that is behind that kind of attack, is the serpent. John 8, 44. Ye are, ye are of your father the devil. Okay. And the loss of your father ye will do. Mm -hmm. She was a murderer from the beginning. Yes. And abode not in the truth. Yes. Because there is no truth in him. Okay. When he speaks a lie, mm -hmm. he speaketh of his own. That means he's speaking his native language. Another translation said it. So when he's speaking a lie, he's speaking his native language. Yes? For he is a liar and, and the, the father of it. Amen. Amen. So there you have it. It's a powerful weapon. Let me give you an example. It is one of the reasons where Christians become alienated from their families when they become born again and begin to want to walk with God. That is the tool that the devil uses against them. I'll give you an example. They say sister and her nuclear family became alienated from her entire extended family when they became born again one by one. Before then, oh, they all loved her. She was a blessing to them. Everybody flocked around her. Come and eat. Come and take things from her house. But when she began to born again, became born again, began to live for God and began to show to and God began to show her the secrets of the kind of foundation that she comes from and she began to pray, trouble started then the devil began to fight her back that's another thing, when you are doing warfare the idols of your father's house will raise up everybody else to fight you <laughs> raise them up to fight you so don't fight them. Just calm down. Just continuously face the idol and, and the strong men. And when you win them, you win the family. You win your family back. So now, uh, slander was a simple, she became a, a, an ordained minister. Slander was a simple strategy that the devil used against her stirred up everybody against her nobody was listening to her the slander worked everybody ran away until over 10 years later something else like 20 years later things began to happen in the family what she has been telling them was happening was going was happening that was due to some foundational issues began to happen Three people died in the family within eight months. Ah, then they came and looked for her. I said, uh, uh, sister, that prayer that uh, you said we should now pray. That prayer you said we should now pray. Let us pray it. You will win in the end, beloved. You just continue facing. The they now started coming to her. Oh, auntie, I had a terrible dream. And the... Uh, a, demonic, a, a prophetic word came from our ancestry that uh, this thing, this problem is from... Uh, and you know, you, you, you know the spiritual map of the family. What do you think? Tell us. You will now become their consultant. Amen? Amen. You, just face, you just face what God... Don't bother to say, I didn't do it. Oh, no. It's not me. Oh, no. no. How many people are you going to... How many people are you going to talk to? It's not possible. <laughs> but remember in Hosea 1 10 the Bible says and it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them ye are not my people there it shall be said unto them you are the sons of the living God just keep your eyes on that just keep your eyes on that even in Ezekiel 29 21 Ezekiel 29 1, 21 he said and in that day I will cause the horn of the house of Israel to bud forth and I will give thee the opening of the mouth in the midst of them. 
and they shall know that I am the Lord. They will now know that that God is your God. Hallelujah. So meanwhile, what you need to do, what you need to do is to know which word of God to use to fight. Because if they talk too much about you, it makes you sick. Your body will be aching. Because the Bible says such wicked words are arrows, poisoned arrows. In fact, in the dream, if you see somebody that's been backbited, you will see the body, the back will be full of scars. The back of the dress will be torn and the skin will be full of scars. You know that, oh, they backbited this person. And imagine the such pains, such such wounds, we have, we, we have pains from them. Psalm 11, 2, Psalm 11, 2. It says, For lo, the wicked bend their bow, they make ready their arrow upon the string, that they may privily shoot at the upright at heart. So what you are looking at is a series of arrows, arrows, arrows. Don't take it lightly. Amen. Amen. Psalm 35. Psalm 35. I'm just reading some of the lamentations of some psalmists that have gone through it. 11, 15 and 16. 11, 15 and 16. Do you have it? Yes. Eleven. False witnesses did rise up. Mm -hmm. They lay to me charges that to I my knew charge. Not. They lay to my charge, charge. Mm -hmm. things that I knew not. I knew not. They rewarded Go on. me uh -huh. evil for good uh -huh. to the spoiling of my soul. Yes. But as for me, mm -hmm. when they were sick, mm -hmm. my clothing was sackcloth. Yes. I humbled my soul with fasting. Yes. And my prayer returned with return into me, my mind. Yes. Oh boy. Um, to my own bosom. Oh bosom. Yes, jump to 15. But in my adversity, uh -huh. they rejoice and gather themselves together. Mm. Yea, the objects gather themselves. The objects gather themselves together against me. Mm. Yes. I knew it's it not. not. Mm -hmm. They did tear me and sees not uh -huh. with hypocritical mockers in and fits. Fits. Mm -hmm. they gnashed upon they gnashed me, upon they me. chewing me thank you that's all and they will refuse to help you these are people you have helped before they will refuse to help you they will refuse to help you these are your own family your own blood they will refuse to help you so don't be surprised. It has happened to others before. Before. Zephaniah 3.3. 3. Zephaniah 3.3. 3. I'll read it. He said, Her princes within her are roaring lions. Her judges are evening wolves. They gnaw not at the bones till morning. They chew the bones and break your bones. And they are your own people within her. He said, Her princes within her are just judges. Evening whoops. Hallelujah. So don't take co-conspirators conspir lightly. They can make you lose what cannot be recovered. And it can stagnate your destiny for years. It's so strange. I was going to teach this today. and Somebody has sent a text in the night. I said, oh, mama, I finally found a job. And then, but somebody's already sitting down there. And uh, she's going to, uh, to make sure that I don't get the job. And... I said, don't worry. I sent her. She's sitting down doing the job now. You see, she texts me by morning. She said, mommy, and it worked. It worked. <laughs> it worked. I'm sitting in my office. I'm doing the work right now. Don't, don't take such. Zephaniah 3.3. 3. Zephaniah 3.3. 3. And don't forget the Bible says in Proverbs 22, 1, that a good name is rather to be chosen than great riches. You, they will divert your glorious destinies from grace to grass. Make sure that they drive all your helpers away. You must go and be praying. Don't defend yourself. Just go and be praying. Amen. Amen. Your greatest weapon is the word of truth. That's the word of God. It's the word of God. So number one, weapons against slanderers. 
against liars. Number one weapon is your own righteousness. If they are lying against you and it is the truth, it will be difficult for God to fight for you. Hmm? Your own righteousness. Now, the belt of truth is an integral part of the full armor of God. The belt of truth is the one that holds the, the breastplate of righteousness in front and at the back. It holds them together. And it's on that belt that you hang your dagger, you hang your arrows, and this and that. You see, your belt, your belt of truth. So the first thing is that you yourself, the first thing is that you yourself must make sure that you don't tell lies. If not, that weapon they are using against you is going to land. It's going to work. It's going to work. Psalm 1, 1 and 5. Psalm 1, verses 1 and 5. Yes. Blessed is the man mm -hmm. that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, mm -hmm. nor standeth in the ways of sinners, mm -hmm. nor seateth in the seat of the scoffer. Five. Please go to five. Therefore, mm -hmm. the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, mm -hmm. nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. So if you are not walking with the ungodly, you are st not standing in the way of sinners, or sitting in the seat of scornful, then the ungodly, when the judgment of God comes, they will be judged. They will not be able to stand. Their words will not stand against you. It will fall. Hallelujah. That's number one weapon. Number two weapon. Number two. The hail and the waters of the Lord. Mama, um, Isaiah 28. Open it down while I explain. The second weapon that God has against liars and slanderers is the hail and the waters of the Lord. Is that 50, uh, 28? Are you there? Yes, ma'am. 15 and 17. Because he has said, mm -hmm. he has made a covenant with dead, mm -hmm. and with hair are we at agreement. Yes. From the overflowing scourged shall pass through. Mm -hmm. It shall not come unto us, mm -hmm. for we have made lies our refuge. For we have made lies our refuge, yes. And under falsehood have and we, we hid, hid ourselves. ourselves. Can you see that? There are some people that make lies their refuge. And they hide under falsehood. In fact, they are in the church looking pious. But all they are are slanderers and liars. Yes. Therefore, seventeen. Judgment also will I lay to the lion, mm -hmm. and righteousness to the plummet. Plummet. Can you see now righteousness again? That's the first weapon that we said. Yes, your own righteousness. And yes. The hail shall sweep away the refuge of lies. So the hail shall sweep away the refuge of lies. Yes. And the waters shall overflow the hiding, hiding place. place. That's it. So they are lying against you at work. They want to lose you your job. They are lying against you. Say, she says she's a Christian after all. Oh God, arise. Release your hail to sweep away the refuge of, their refuge of light. And let waters overflow their hiding place. Expose them. Expose their lies, oh God. And justify me. Let your righteousness be upon me. Justify me, Lord. In the name of Jesus. These are prayers that you continuously pray. You know, when you remember, instead of lamenting, you know, you just say, Oh Lord, release your hail to sweep away their refuge of lies. Release your waters to overflow their hiding place. Expose those that are behind this, Lord. Expose them. Expose them. Expose them. Disgrace them. Disappoint them. 
let their weapon not prosper against me. You said no weapon shall no weapon shall prosper against me. Their weapon must not prosper against me. Sweep away their refuge of lies. Let the waters overflow their hiding place. In Jesus' name, Amen. The third weapon, number three, is the fan of the Lord. The fan of the Lord. It's also called a winnowing fork. Um, Matthew 3, 12. Matthew 3, 12. It's also called, it's also called um, the winnowing fork of the Lord. The fan of the Lord. The Lord has this fan in his, in his hand. Okay, let's read it first. Whose fan <clears throat> is in his hand? Okay. And he will thoroughly watch his floor uh -huh. and gather his wheat into the garden. Ghana. That's Ghana. Into, into your barn, yes. But he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. fire. Okay. So the Lord will fan the, their words. You ask the Lord to fan their words into his unquenchable fire and let the lies, the lies is the chaff. Let it burn and let the truth come out. The truth will now turn around and judge the liar. Because they will say, but this is now the truth. But this is what you told us. This is what you told us. It is not anything you can say by yourself unless they ask you, of course, and say what happened. You give your explanation. If they will not take it, you just, the Lord will... So we're going to, so you say those scriptures are loud and then you play, pray like this. My father, my father. My father, my father. Pastor is scribbling, <laughs> scribbling away. Let us pray. My father, my father. My father, my father. Behold the conspiracy of lies. Behold the conspiracy of lies. And falsehood. And falsehood. That has been raised against me. That has been raised against me. And my family. And my family. In any way that I have opened the door. In any way that I have opened the door. To the father of lies. To the father of lies. To afflict me this way. To afflict me this way. I repent, Lord. I repent, Lord. And ask you to forgive me. And ask you to forgive me. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Let your blood wash me clean. Let your blood wash me clean. Of all unrighteousness. Of all unrighteousness. I ask you to come to my rescue. I ask you to come to my rescue. And let all the lies spoken against me. And let all the lies spoken against be exposed, be exposed and let my righteousness and let my righteousness which you put upon me which you put upon me be clearly seen be clearly seen and revealed and revealed in the name of jesus in the name of jesus i ask lord i ask lord that you release your hail that you release your hail and waters and waters to sweep away to sweep away the refuge of lies the refuge of lies the refuge of the liars and conspirators. The refuge of the liars and conspirators. And let their hiding place. And let their hiding place. They washed away. Washed away. According to your word. According to your word. In Isaiah twenty-eight. In Isaiah twenty-eight. Let them be exposed and disgraced. And let them be exposed and be disgraced. And let me not be ashamed. And let me not be ashamed. For I have put my trust in you. For I have put my trust in you, Lord. Lord, let their words, let their words be fanned be into your judgment fire, into your judgment fire. And, let the lies be consumed. and let the lies be consumed and let the truth be clearly revealed for you are the truth in Jesus name, in Jesus name. Amen. 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 Amen number two set of people to deal with are thieves and robbers now we are now talking about physical thieves that actually steal from you. Those, the first lot, they're stealing your reputation, your good name. But these are thieves. Robbers come into your house and steal. Or someone is stealing from you at work. Somebody is stealing, you know. You take the matter to prayer before God and to the police, if need be. If need be. But you first take it before God. Amen. Amen. Now, the weapon of war... Zechariah 5, Mama, we're going to read. The weapon of war against the thief and the robber is the flying scroll of the Lord. 
And I'll give you a very clear example of how it worked one day. Weapon of against thieves. I'm robbers, thieves. The flying scroll of the Lord. Zechariah 5, 1 to 4. Please read. Then I turned okay. and lifted up my eyes and looked, and behold, a flying roll. And he said unto me, What seest thou? And I answered, I said, I see a flying roll. Mm -hmm. The length thereof is twenty cubits, mm -hmm. and the breadth thereof ten cubits. Mm -hmm. Then said he unto me, This is the cause that goeth forth over the face of the whole earth. Yes. For every one is still everyone that. For every one that still it shall be cut up mm -hmm. as on this side, mm -hmm. according to it. Mm -hmm. And every one that sweareth shall be cut off as on that side, according to it. Mm -hmm. I will bring it forth, mm -hmm. said the Lord of hosts, and it shall enter into the house of the thief, mm -hmm. and into the house of him that sweareth falsely by my, my name. name. Yes. And it shall remain in the midst of his house. Mm -hmm. And shall consume it with the timber thereof and the stones thereof. So it's very dangerous to steal from children of God if they have this secret. You are working for a Christian and you are stealing from his business. You are stealing, taking it to your house. The flying scroll come with curses. It's like a scroll, it's like a long, like a kitchen roll or toilet roll, long one. It has curses written on this side against those that steal, and on the other side, curses written against those that swear falsely by the name of God. Because they will always lie and say, no, I didn't steal, I don't know anything about I know nothing about it. And the, I swear, God is my witness. There are also those that swear falsely by the name of God and claim they can do, they are doing miracles, which of course they never do. God is a miracle worker and he knows when to bring his miracles forward. So those are still and those are swear falsely by the name of the Lord. It's an amazing weapon. It's like five, five, 15 feet wide and 30 feet long. Curses are released like arrows to enter the house of the thief and begin to consume that house where they, they are stolen property. Consume it. Now, let me give you an example. I don't know how it works, but I I had a friend. My friend and I were at a prayer meeting, and her son and her daughter called from another city and said, Mommy, 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 uh, I, I made some clothes for somebody and sent it all in a suitcase through a courier service. And on the way to the airport, it was stolen. This was in Abuja. On the way to the airport in Abuja, um, another car came and snatched the car with all the courier that the courier company was using, snatched everything, including my, my friend's daughter's uh, suitcase of goods, and, um, and made away with the car. So she went out to receive the call. Then when she came in, I said, don't worry. We opened this and we prayed. A few days later, maybe a week, <laughs> the suitcase was found thrown into a bush along the road, airport road. I don't know how it happened. Whether the flying roll <laughs> was already shooting arrows at them as they were carrying away the, uh, uh, the car with all the goods and they decided that is the one, that's the one responsible for the flying roll. Just throw it out. They threw it out. How nobody else saw it and stole it away, we don't know. But somehow the person that saw it took it to the courier house and gave it to them. And nothing was missing. Nothing was missing. We don't know what happened to other goods or to the car that was stolen. But the one that we prayed, God restored that suitcase. And it was able to get to the person that he, she was sending it to. 
in Lagos in time. That's just an example I wanted to give you. So it works. Just ask the Lord, Lord, release your flying scroll into the house of the person stealing, into the house of the person telling all these lies. Some of them that sit on television or on YouTube telling lies, say, God said, God said. We should pray some of these prayers against them. Anyway, hallelujah. Now, dealing with satanic horns, number three, weapon. Horn, number four, sorry. Dealing with satanic horns. What does a horn do? Zechariah, let's go to Zechariah. Sorry. Okay, what does a horn do? I'm coming, let's see. Uh, now, when we were studying the, about the strong men, the dragon in particular, you remember? We read about, uh, we talked about the dragon, how he uses his horns to scatter people at the edge of breakthroughs. That's what the dragon uses his horn to do. Prevents them from being lifted up in life. It's a, it's a spirit of delay. It causes delay. It causes abortion of breakthroughs. Now, 1 Corinthians 16, 9. I'll read it. You hold on to that. Where are you, Zechariah? Okay. 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 He said, St. Paul said, For a great and effectual door is open to me, and there are many adversaries. 1 Corinthians 16, 9. That's the work of horns. Horns. In Ezekiel 29.3, Pharaoh is referred to as a dragon who believes that everything belongs to him and therefore he can hold people ransom and hold them in bondage as long as he pleases. You see? That's a horn. It became a horn. The, the, the Pharaoh that knew not Joseph became a horn that did not want to release the children of Israel from captivity. Now, horns also have, they also boast of their work. Daniel 7, Daniel 7, 25. Daniel 7, 25. It talks about the little horn. That's the Antichrist. He said, and she shall speak great words against the Most High, and shall wear out the saints of the Most High, and think to change times and laws. And they shall be given into his hand until a time and times and the dividing of times. So you can see that what a horn does is to cause delay. Delay. He wants to change the timing of God. He wants to change the timetable of God where he will do what that he has set. The set time. He wants to change the set time. And he wants to change the laws. If, a, if we, we explain this um, in the teaching about the Antichrist, that God has a law that governs everything that he will do. But the, the Antichrist will want to change that law. It's called a horn. Now, what's the weapon against horns? Zechariah 1. Sorry. Zechariah 1. What's the weapon against horns? It's in Sekra 1, 18 to 21. They are the four carpenters of God. Four carpenters of God. The weapons against horns are four carpenters of God. These are special angels. And they are spoken on in, of in Sekra 1, 18 to 21. Then lifted I up my eyes mm -hmm. and saw, and behold, four horns. Mm -hmm. And I said unto the angel that talked with me, What be this? And he answered me, These are the horns which have scattered Judah, mm -hmm. Israel, and Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. And the Lord showed me four carpenters. Mm -hmm. Then said I, What comes this to do? And he spake, saying, These are the horns which have scattered Judah, 
so that no man did lift, lift up his head. But these are come to fret them, to cast out the horns of the Gentiles, mm -hmm. which lifted up their horns over the land of Judah to scatter it. Amen. Amen. So whenever you find that your breakthroughs are always being aborted, even babies, women that have repeated abortions, they have to be praying against horns. Some of them will even tell you that they had a, they had a dream that a cow came and hit the stomach with their, with the horn. So we ask the Lord, Lord, send your carpenters. Send your carpenters to come and fray and chisel and saw and cut off and hammer and cast these horns out of our way in the name of Jesus. Very simple. When we're teaching about angels, that teaching is on YouTube too. Teaching about angels, we talked about, about this, these carpenter angels and all the jobs that uh, carpenters do. I use this if I'm in the traffic. I need I have a plane to catch, and there's suddenly a traffic I, I deal with horns. Lord, release your carpenters to free and cast out those horns, causing delay in traffic. Out of my way. Or you are trying to send an important email and it keeps getting stuck. Or sometimes there's a prolonged power outage which is very common here in Nigeria, you deal with horns. Especially where our your water is hydroelectricity. You see, you are dealing with the horns of the dragon. So sometimes I will say, Lord, we need electricity. Release your carpenters to free and cast out the horns, preventing electricity from entering our house. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, dealing with spells, enchantments, astral attacks. That's number five. Dealing with spells, enchantments, and astral attacks. When you're under a spell, you feel woozy. Or you just find yourself making mistakes. You see, they know there's something you need to do. You feel confused or maybe in the dream somebody comes to lay hands on you or to chant over you or make pronouncements over your life either when you are awake or a dream he's trying to put a spell on you you must be very careful about people who lay hands on you and don't say oh you only touch my arm no especially with women a man should not just be putting his hands on you anyhow step back or somebody wants to talk to you and is moving so close a stranger step back or if you don't know that person you have to be very very careful you may start feeling disorientated or you may feel very ill for no reason They can do that by coming to kiss you in the dream or trying to kiss you. Don't say, oh, but it's my friend. Nobody is supposed to kiss you in the dream. It's a kiss of death, like the one that Judas gave to the Lord Jesus. So that he can hand him over to his assassins. And they just want to use it to put a spell on you. So that you follow them to the gates of death. Enchantment is what Delilah used on Samson when he placed his, her head, his head on her lap. A woman said to you, show me where your strength is. Show me where the source of your strength is that you may be afflicted. That, at my, that I might afflict you. And you put your head on her lap. You see, there's a problem there. It means to begin with, he has done something to his intellect. Hmm? Such women have incantations written on their laps. 
and on their skirts. I didn't say so, it's in the Bible. Lamentations 1. A woman, a man, a woman like Delilah says to a man, a man of God, or you a Christian, show me where the, your strength lies, the source of your strength lies, because I want to afflict you. I want to afflict you. Show me where your, you, you know. And many times she has, you, he has told her a lie and she had called the Philistines to come. But because it was a lie, he didn't lose his strength. And after all that, he still placed his head on her lap, which means she has, she has put a spell on him. She has enchanted him and taken away his intellect. And the Bible says that such women have incantations written on their skirts and on their laps. So men, beware. And sometimes they put enchantment in the food that they give you. Don't eat anyhow, anywhere. As a Christian, you are not supposed to eat anywhere, anyhow. <clears throat> we were taught in Bible school, you don't eat outside. And it's in the Bible. Jeremiah I think Jeremiah, he said, Thou shalt not go to the house of, of uh, feasting and sit down and be eating. When we were in Bible school, I was surprised we went out with the rector and we were so happy. He said, Ah, yes. Uh, he went to um, a, a, a woman evangelist was being made a bishop. So we all went with him and we knew, Oh God, we're going to eat all oh, the best of foods. We were so shocked. After finishing, after he has finished, uh, they laid out on her and, and <clears throat> anointed her and all that. He jumped into his car and left. <clears throat> we all had to jump. <clears throat> Excuse me. We all had to jump into the car and, and follow him. And <laughs> but of course, what they would do is they would send your food in coolers. You know. But those are the kind of places that people get enchanted. You're sitting at tables in a place like that. You don't even know who is the one sitting next to, next to you and all that. What does it say in Lamentations 1? 9, verse 9. Yes. Lamentations 1, 9. Her filthiness is in her skirts. Her filthiness is in her skirts. She remembered not her last end. Okay. Therefore, she came down. Mm -hmm. Wonderful, wonderfully. Mm -hmm. She had no comforter. Oh, it's Lord. okay. What I wanted was that there is a filthiness in the skirts. Enchantment written on skirts. In fact, if you Google it, I Googled it one day. I was looking for, and uh, a picture came out, you know, with a girl wearing one short skirt, and they wrote it there, you know, enchantments written on her skirts. So when you see all those girls with the short skirts and you are looking at them, you are, you are falling for enchantments. So what are the weapons against enchantments? Spells, astral attacks. Astral attacks is when somebody actually comes to attack you in the dream. You can see the face or you may not see the face. They come to attack you in the dream. Weapons of war against enchantment, spells, astral attacks. Number one. Revelation 7 now. In number one. Angels of the wind. You know when we're learning about angels, we did say that every weapon is wielded by angels. It's angels that, that, you know, hold the weapons. The same way you have angels of the elements, the wind, the waters, fire. They're all in the book of Revelations. So, Revelations 7, 1, what does it say? And after these things, I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth. Mm -hmm. 
holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on any tree. Amen. Amen. So we ask God to command the angels to hold back that wind of evil, that wind of enchantments, and also ask them to release the four winds to blow the enchantments away. The angels of the winds are able to hold back the wind. They are also able to release the wind. Amen? Amen. So you ask them to hold back the enchantment and send the four winds to blow the enchantment away from you. Amen. Amen. The second thing is that the second weapon is to deal with the altars where the enchantment is coming from. Deal with the altars because it's coming from a coven or a shrine of one Babalawo's house. You know, they're mentioning your name and raising all manner of incantations and it's coming at you in a cloud of demons. So you deal with it at the source. Now, this will take us back to 10 steps prayers. So we use steps 3 and 4 to deal with altars. Command the altars rooted out, pulled down, thrown down, destroyed. Command the satanic priests disrobed, disgraced, and paralyzed. The satanic watchers blinded and they are, and they are uh, um, monitoring devices frustrated and, dis, and dismantled. Then you, then you command the voices from the altars to be silenced, be silenced over your life. And you command the door to be shut so that demons, the enchantment can no longer locate you. So I shut the door that they have opened into my life with the key of David that shuts and no man can open in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Um, how to restrain the command the door. Okay. Um, now, how to restrain a wayward person? There are times when you will need to, re to re restrain a wayward person. A wayward husband, a wayward wife, a wayward child, a runaway child. Restrain a wayward person. A runaway child, you know, it can be very distressing. Like the prodigal son, I'm sure it's the weapon that God used against the prodigal son until he had to come back home. <laughs> a wayward husband, or in the church, a busybody, a mischievous person going about tackling, causing dissension in the family or in the church must not take it lightly. Go to God in prayers. You saw him in somebody's house. Ah, he's going to tell that story in another person's house. Oh, he's standing in one corner talking to the next person. Now, the Bible is a prayer book. I think we've said this over and over again. And it has countermeasures for every issue of life. So just take it to God in prayer. Take it to God in prayer. They can you. The, a busybody can destroy a church, can cause serious dissension in the church. First Timothy, what does it say? First Timothy, First Timothy 5, 13. First Timothy 5, 13. Okay, let me read it. You've got it. Okay. And withdraw their name. And withdraw. And withdraw their name from the 
with all that learn to be and idle. with all they learn they learn to be idle, idle. Uh -huh. wandering about from house to house uh -huh. and not only idle uh -huh. but tactless tactless also means, and busybodies gossips speaking things which they ought not which they ought not so when you have such a trouble in the church or in the family you need to restrain that person and there's a very neat <laughs> there's a very neat weapon against such a person who's here too In Hosea 2, the Lord is talking here about a wayward woman. Hosea 2, 6 to 8. Hosea 2, 6 to 8. Therefore, the no, Hosea 2, 6 to 8. Hosea 2. Hosea 2. Okay. 6 to 8. Therefore, Behold, I will hedge up the way with horn, with thorns, mm -hmm. and make a wall that she shall not find her. Okay, path. sorry, I was reading from five. Yes. Read from five, sorry. Okay. Mm. For their mother has played the harlot. Uh -huh. She that conceives them had done shamefully. Mm -hmm. For she said, I will go after my lovers. Mm -hmm. That give me my bread and my water, my wool and my flax, my oil and my drink. Mm -hmm. Therefore, behold, I will hedge up the way with thorns mm -hmm. and make a wall that she shall not find her paths. Yes. Okay, that's it. It's a hedge of thorns. It's called a hedge of thorns. <clears throat> Like barbed wire, like barbed wire. God will just put it around her. And she won't be able to find a way to this place. Like the prodigal son. He just could not go on. Because everything, everywhere he went, there was no way out. Everywhere he had spent all his money. The people he spent his money on, they, they, they will not, no longer look at him now. They won't follow him and say, okay, you come and eat out of our own. No, no, no. So he had nowhere to go. He was walking with pigs. Can you imagine a Jew walking with pigs? It's an unclean animal. And he was even eating what they're eating. How is that possible? That's a serious hedge of thorns. So he's not, he saw no point in continuing his error. And he went back home. You can read all that in Luke 15, 14 to 18. That's the story of the prodigal son. So he said, and he came to himself. Verse 17. Luke 15. He said, And he came to himself. Hedge of thorns can make somebody come to himself. And he said, How many hired servants of my fathers have bread enough to spare and to spare? And I perish with hunger. I will arise and go to my father. Only to find that the father has been waiting for him all along. So when a wayward son comes home or a wayward child, you must be ready to receive them. A wayward husband, a wayward wife must be ready to receive them the way the father received the prodigal son. The way Hosea received his wife back over and over. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Now how do we deal with covens? covens, groves, satanic strongholds. Because that is where all this trouble comes from. How do we deal with covens? How do we deal with covens? Groves. A grove is just a coven in the forest. And other satanic strongholds. That is actually where the you remember that's where the that's where the altar is. The altar is the place that gives um, that gives um, that gives the the 
doorway that the devil comes in and out his demons come in and out they channel them from second heaven from hell then they start sending them to their targets now you need to pull down strongholds also if you have uh, if you are going on the mission field or you are pre preparing for an evangelical crusade or you've just moved into an environment you have to pull down the strongholds that are there before you go there you go and do a prophetic a prayer walk and pull down strongholds or else if you move there before you have dealt with the principalities and powers they, they will not let you rest this will deal when you deal with this it will deal with the strong man that is ruling over that environment because that is what forms a stronghold a stronghold is like a tower you know like a strong tower where the the, the strong man is hiding hoping you will not know that he's there but the bible tells us that the word of god is able to penetrate all that and expose them and dismount and dismantle their demonic structures or maybe you are experiencing tough resistance in the work of god or at work or maybe in your studies in school or anything anywhere that you feel that there's a darkness cast over everything that you are doing. You will need to deal with the stronghold. It means there's a place where spiritual wickedness is being channeled over the environment. It may be a physical place, but definitely it will, it will form a spiritual uh, covering over an environment. And make it difficult for for the blessings of heaven to come down as far as god is the word of god is concerned whether it is physical or spiritual god is able to is the word of god is able to handle them after all the red sea was a physical body of water and it opened it opened because um by the power of, of God, it opened. Okay. Um, one, of the first, one of the things we do is to ask God to walk through the land. Lord, you are taking me to go and live in such and such a place. Please walk through that place and make it safe for me. Of course, when God is walking through, He's a great king. He walks with his hosts of angels. And they will begin to, to do some work for you. Now, weapons against satanic strongholds. Weapons against satanic. You see, the, the strongholds keep men bound in that environment. So if you are going there for evangelism or on a mission, they will make sure the work is impossible for you. Or if you are going there to live, they will make sure there's a covering over you because you are automatically their enemy. You are a child of God. You are their enemy. They don't want you there. So they are ready. So before you move there, you yourself must have gone there. Of course, of course, before you move into a house, you would have anointed the house before you bring your load there. Aha. Uh -huh. And uh, when we're going on missions or going on evangelist uh, uh, missions, you call it um, spying the land. You would have gone there, you know, to see where you are going to live and make all the arrangements. And you see, you do not just make physical uh, uh, arrangements. You must make spiritual environment as, as well. Because when you are entering the land, you, stay, you start saying things like, lift up your heads, O ye gates. Be lifted up, ye everlasting doors, that the King of Glory may come in. Because the Lord said, I will go before me. The, because the Lord said, He will go before me, He will go with me, be my rear guard. Therefore, let every gate of brass be opened. And the Lord will come in with His angels to prepare the place for me. 
and so on and so forth. That's what we're trying to do. Hallelujah. So what are the weapons? Did I lose you, Pastor? Okay. Weapons against satanic strongholds. Number one is a wep is the weapons of God's indignation. Jeremiah 15. Oh. Weapons of God's indignation. Indignation is God's wrath, his anger, his jealousy, his, his ah, that. So in this world that I created, you people think you can come and um, you can come and locate yourself in a particular place. You don't want my children to enter. You don't want my light to enter the place. That is what is called indignation. Of Weapons indignation. of God's indignation. Mm -hmm. Jeremiah 50, 25 to 27. Yes. The Lord has opened his armor. Amory. Amory, and has brought forth the weapons of the of his indignation. Uh -huh. For this is the work of the Lord God of hosts yes. in the land of the Chidens. Chaldeans. Chaldeans. Mm -hmm. Come against her from the uttermost border. Utmost border. Mm -hmm. Open her storehouse. Mm -hmm. Cast her up as heaps. That's Jezebel, by the way. Chaldeans, you know, you know, um, in um, Isaiah 47, she was called the daughter of the Chaldeans. So he's talking about witchcraft. Of course, this is mother of witchcraft. So come against her with, to the, from the utmost border. Open her storehouses. Cast, cast her up as heaps. Destroy the her utterly. Yet, let nothing of her be left. Slay all her bullocks. Let them go down to the slaughter. Woe unto them. For their day is come, the time of their visitation. Now that is how God's indignation works. <laughs> I can imagine it works like a stormy wind, a wild wind, just destroying, destroying anything and everything that will stop you from entering into that land and possesses him for possessing it for God. Amen. Amen. So that's a special armory. It's full of is full of all manner of weapons. So we ask God to open his weapon of indignation, bring out those weapons, and clear the land for us to enter and possess for him. And possess for him. Amen. Amen. Um, there are other passages that we can use. You stand there and declare it very powerfully. Just as I read this one now. Psalm 18, 1 to 24. Psalm 18, 1 to 24. You stand, you declare it powerfully. Isaiah 30, Isaiah 30, 27 to 33. Isaiah 30, 27 to 33. And my favorite one is Habakkuk 3, 1 to 16. Okay. Habakkuk 3, 1 to 16. I call it when you want to fight an all-out war. You don't know where the problem is coming from. Just stand and declare it. And watch God go to war for you. It will activate the angels in charge of all those weapons. As we are declaring it, you know, powerfully and, you know, powerfully and, and with anointing. The angels will be charged to rise up. And start fighting for you even in places that you do not know. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Then we stop there today. Father, we thank you. We bless you, thank you for all that you have taught us today. We ask Holy Spirit that you continue to teach us. Continue to show us even those things that were not mentioned. So that we can live our lives to serve God. So that the reason for which Christ came, that is that we might be set free from our enemies and from the hands of those who hate us. That we might serve God 
in holiness and righteousness all the days of our lives without fear and that we might end up with him in heaven. Teach us Holy Spirit and help us. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.